Okay, so here we're asked to find the mean and the standard deviation of the following set of numbers. We'll begin by finding the mean. Mean should be a familiar calculation. Let's make sure we get the notation and the steps correct. Firstly, let's see how many data points we're working with. Altogether, we have 10. So I'm just going to make a note of the fact that n equals 10. From here, I'm going to go ahead and start to calculate the mean. The mean is represented by the symbol called x bar, an x with a horizontal bar on the top. And the actual formula, or to formulize what you may have known before, So a symbol known as x bar. The mean is represented by a symbol known as x bar. The mean is represented by a symbol known as x bar. And to formalize the formula, it is the sum of all of the x values divided by the count of the x values. So every x value added together, divided by however many x values you actually have. So it is going to be 56, 76, 39, 84, 64, 74, 48, 24, X bar simply being we'll use the symbol X bar and I'll formalize that formula as the sum of the data points divided by the count of the data points all right so we're just going to add together each of the values we had been given originally in the question. This should be able to be put into the calculator quite easily. Always good to write out what you're doing. So in my numerator, all of those values add together. And in the denominator, we'll simply input 10. We'll go away and type this into the calculator. And we should get 600 over 10, which gives us back an answer of 60. All right, if that's the mean, I just want to quickly check that out against the data points that I have. Would it make sense for the mean to be 60? Some of these values are above 60, some of them are below 60. 60 could be a reasonable answer to the mean value here. If I had an answer of 100, alarm bells would be ringing immediately. None of these are as big as 100. 100 should not be my mean. If I got an answer of 13 for my mean, once again, all of these are bigger than 13. So that should not be my mean. The mean should be something that represents the middle of the data, the average of all the data points that you have. 60 sounds good. Okay, moving on to calculate the standard deviation. Okay, so now the standard deviation is quite an important measure in statistics. It is a measure of how spread out the data is. Another way to think of that is how consistent is the data. A small standard deviation would show that all of the values are very close to the median point, whereas a larger standard deviation means that these are spread further from the median point. So there are a few ways to approach this. We'll start with the sum of the squares. So this is what we call the sum of the square deviation from x. And one of the formulas for this is given like this. So the s of xx equals the sum of the differences between each of these values and x bar, all squared. I'm going to go ahead and see what do I get for x minus 
x bar. Each of my data points with the mean, the value 60 subtracted. 56 minus 60 will give negative 4. 76 will give me 16. 39 minus 60 will leave me with negative 21. 84 minus 60, 64 minus 60, 74 minus 60, 48 minus 60. I'm once again going to get a negative answer here. So 48 minus 60 is negative 12. 24 minus 60 is going to leave me with a negative 36. 42 minus 60, one more negative, negative 18. And then 93 minus 60 will leave you with 33. So these are the values, or these are the differences, the deviations from the mean. If I was to sum these at this point, I would get an answer of zero, which isn't very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to square all of these just to make sure that I have positive values. So we'll start with negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16 may need more space here, 16 squared, 256, 21 squared, 441, 24 squared, 576, 4 squared is 16, 14 squared, that's going to give us 196, negative 12 squared, 144, 36 squared, that's going to lead to 1,296. Negative 18 squared is obviously going to give us 324. And 33 squared, that 1,089. Okay, so I found the deviations of each of the points from the mean. I've squared those deviations from the mean. And now I actually want to get the sum of all of those deviations from the mean. Okay, so adding all of those values together gets me 4,354. This is the sum of the square deviations. This is the sum of the deviation squared. So this is not the only way for us to calculate the SFXX we can also go ahead and use another version of this formula, which says S of XX is going to be the sum of the squares minus N times X bar squared. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So now the sum of the squares is each of these values squared and added together. So. Let's go ahead and plug that into the calculator, and that leads to 40,354. Thinking back to the formula, I'm going to need this. 40,354 minus 10 times the mean, which is 60 squared. And that, once again, leads to 4,354. So two ways there for us to calculate S of XX, both of those totally valid. Which situation would each be more useful? Uh, this is a judgment call. One of them took three or four lines to do, whereas another quite quickly with some calculator work, we could put those in. Either way, we need to be able to calculate S of XX. Okay, so now looking at this table, we have a choice now of which of these values we're going to find. Two of them are much related and you'll see as we go through the formulas. So we have the population mean squared deviation. We have the population root mean squared deviation. We have the sample variance and then the sample standard deviation. Colloquially, the mean squared deviation is sometimes called the variance and colloquially, the root mean squared deviation is sometimes called the standard deviation. Be extremely careful which one your question has asked you for. These are the terms we should be looking out for in the exam question. Okay, so we'll start with the mean squared deviation. The mean squared deviation, to find it, its formula is simply S of XX divided by N. 
to find the root mean squared deviation, it's going to be the root of s of x, x divided by n, or the root of the mean squared deviation. The clue was right there in the name. Variance is s of x, x divided this time not by n, but by n minus 1. And the standard deviation, you guessed it, is the root of the variance, the root of s of x, x divided by n minus 1. So each of these being slightly different from another and two of them being roots of a separate two. So be extremely careful which of these your question has asked you for. Um, but in each of these cases, we'll go ahead and calculate what we would get in this example. The mean squared deviation, 4,354 divided by 10. Wouldn't even need a calculator here. 435.4. The root mean squared deviation would be the root of the same calculation. And that gives us 2 decimal places, 20.87. We'll go ahead and do similar calculations. So this time, 4354, four, all divided by 9. So that's my n minus 1. These are 483.78. If we're going to two decimal places, and the standard deviation is 21.9. 9 to 2 decimal places. Now the mean squared deviation and the variance shouldn't differ by too much and the root mean squared deviation and the standard deviation shouldn't differ by too much but your points and your marks in the exam are, ward are rewarded for calculating the correct one of these. Now all of these calculations involve the S of X, X which I would say is the most important part of the calculation but the difference and what will get you your mark is knowing whether you're dividing by n whether you're divided by n minus 1 and whether or not you need to square root get familiar with each of these formulas and look out for the key phrase in the exam question to know which one you need to apply for population that's the mean squared deviation the root mean squared deviation you will be dividing by n. And for samples, the variance, the standard deviation, you'll be dividing by n minus 1.